My name is Ludwig von Mises. I was born in Austria in September of 1881. My parents, Arthur and Adele, raised me and my little brother, Richard, in Vienna, surrounded by high culture and thriving commerce. By the age of 12, I spoke German, Polish and French, Latin and some Yiddish. But more than language, I was mesmerized by economics and fascinated by how wealth was created and destroyed. Around me in Austria and throughout Europe and the continent, I saw the growth, not just of wealth, but hatred of the wealthy as envy, that ancient evil fueled the rise of fascism and socialism. Money was under attack, not just by envy, but also his partner, greed. I defended her with my first book, The Theory of Money and Credit, in which I warned that central banking would inflate her value. It was my opening salvo in what would be a lifelong war of ideas. But then, real-life war forced me to trade my pen for a gun. As an artillery officer on the front lines of World War I, I saw carnage on a scale unimaginable killing millions, starving millions more. I saw firsthand not just the limits of central planning, but the hatred and madness that war unleashed. Humbled by defeat, immobilized in a hospital by my wounds, I decided to devote the rest of my life to defending civilization against the forces of government tyranny. I wrote Nation, State and Economy, defending free markets and free trade and dooming my own career in the process. The University of Vienna closed its doors to me, calling me too classically liberal, too indefatigable, and too Jewish. To my mother, I wasn't Jewish enough, falling in love with Shiksa actress Margit. I made new friends, gathered new colleagues and students, including Friedrich Hayek, who enjoyed the spirit of open inquiry with which we exchanged ideas. In 1922, I published Socialism, a comprehensive indictment of socialist economic policies which destroy not just incentives but information about the value of goods. This book and my Jewish heritage made me a marked man. Hitler youth were marching in the streets outside my apartment. My countrymen were calling for Austria to join Germany in their great socialist scheme to drive Jews from Europe. I got out just in time. I later learned the Nazis raided my apartment, seized my papers, and burned my books in the streets. But my greatest book ever burned yet inside of me. I decided to write a book for the ages, Human Action, in which I would present a comprehensive case for laissez-faire, capitalism-based individual decision-making. With my country now being consumed by National Socialism and all Europe and soon the world on the brink of war, I had a life-or-death decision to make myself. My wife, Margit, our two daughters and I made our harrowing escape through the hills and back roads, narrowly evading Nazi capture, and eventually made our way to America. Though grateful for my life, at 60 years of age, I felt defeated. I set out to be a reformer and felt I had only managed to become a historian of decline. Yet, in my new country, America, I once again made new friends who raised money for me to teach at New York University. I attracted new students, including Murray Rothbard, George Reisman, and Leonard Reed. I wrote new books, including Omnipotent Government, a systematic refutation of the National Socialist Doctrine. I wrote Bureaucracy, which made the case against big government and the administrative state. And finally, my friend Henry Hazlitt convinced me to translate my magnum opus, Human Action, into English. At first, Yale University Press rejected it, claiming no one would read a 1,000-page book championing capitalism. In the end, I prevailed. The book was published and it was a runaway success.
Friends introduced me to another writer who defied publishers' expectations. Her name was Ayn Rand. Like me, she had also fled socialist dictatorship. Her novel, Atlas Shrugged, celebrated heroic entrepreneurs and creative individuals. As I wrote to her, Atlas Shrugged was not merely a novel. It is a cogent analysis of the evils that plague our society. I said she had the courage to tell the masses what no politician told them that all the improvements in your conditions that you take for granted, you owe to the effort of men who are better than you. She was a fighter. I was a fighter. So, needless to say, we sometimes fought. But we never stopped fighting for the rights of the individual and against the forces of collectivism, of racism, of statism, rising once again to endanger society today. Ayn Rand and I, Ludwig van Mises, may no longer walk among you, but we have never left you, and we have left to you the legacy of reason, individualism, liberty. That is now yours to defend. Read our work, discover that legacy, defend it, preserve it, deserve it. <laughs>